Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sparkling tennis collar. It goes with the sparkling tennis bracelet and ring that I made in the two previous tutorials. And this is made more of a choker style so that this area right here lays right at the base of the the throat. So it is a shorter, tighter type of style of necklace. And the way you're going to adjust just how tight it is is by the chain that you put on the back. So this also is using the cuboid bead. You can also use several other beads that work really well in this particular design. Fire polished beads and I tried four millimeter round crystals. They work very nicely. Um, I have tried bicone crystals. They work well. So if you cannot get the cuboid bead, then do not be discouraged. Go ahead and try it anyway. This turns out really pretty. I'll try to include a picture of it on the neck just so Let's get really close so you can see how pretty this is. And let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project today, you will need some size 15-0, 11-0, and 8-0 seed beads. I am using Toho, and they are all three the galvanized aluminum. Then you will need some 4 millimeter beads. I am using 4 millimeter cuboid that you can get at Budget Bead Box. She is currently out of them, but expecting a big order of all different colors very soon, so you may want to check with Budget Bead Box. Otherwise, a 4 millimeter round fire polish bead works beautifully in this design, as well as a 4 millimeter round or bicone will also work. So, don't feel like you have to have the cuboid, though that is what I'm using and it works really nicely in this design. Then you will need a lobster claw clasp and a jump ring and two wire guardians for this particular design. You will also need about 12 inches of chain. Just make sure that your chain is able to um, have your lobster claw clasp pass through it easily. You will also need a size 12 beading needle. Works best with this design because it's difficult to pass through these beads because we put a lot of thread through them plus we're using a 15-0. So also you'll need a small diameter thread. I am using Nanofill. It is the best that works with this design. Eight pound. Whoops. I was shoot it across the room. Eight pound nanofill, or you can use six pound fire line. When extending for this project, because you will need to, make sure that when you tie your square knot and then burn little blobs on the end to extend, you keep it very small. Either that or sew through, knot off, and then sew through a couple more units and um, tie on your thread. So you will need to extend, keep that in mind, and just make sure that your extension is very small. So go ahead and put onto your needle a comfortable length of thread. Um, it's best to start with longer lengths of thread for this so you don't have to extend as often. You may want to go for a wingspan or two. And let's get started. Okay, let's begin this project by putting the longest length of thread that you can comfortably work with on your needle. I'm not going to tell you an exact amount, simply because you're going to need to extend your fire line or your nanofill many times during this project. So just put on a length that you can work with comfortably. The longer, the better. Then <clears throat> pick up six 11 o seed beads onto your needle. Then bring these six 11 o seed beads down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, just enough to hold on to. And then travel back up through the first three 11 o seed beads. Let's get you closer so you can see. And then hold on to the tail, hold on to the three 11 o seed beads you're traveling through, and pull your thread through. And as you're doing that, Draw the second set of 311 O's on top of the first set of 311 O's. 
pull your working thread, pull your tail thread to tighten them, and then travel into the second set of three eleven O's. Pull your thread through, give a little bit of a tug, and this is what you should have. Then pick up three more eleven O seed beads. You're coming out of this end of the second set of 11 O seed beads. You're going to go into the opposite end of 11 O's. Pull your thread through and draw the third set on top of the second set, like this. And then travel back up the third set that you just added. Now we're going to sew back to the first set that we created. So we're coming out of the third set here, we're going to go down into the second set, and then we're going to go up into the first set, travel through all three of them, And here we will put a wire guardian on this end so that it will be done and ready to add our chain when our necklace is finished. At least when the um, weaving portion is finished. So you're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead and your wire guardian through one of the tubes like this. And you're going to draw this down to the end of the thread here, into your project. We're going to place this wire guardian horizontal across these three beads here. So it's going to lay from this side to this side, just like I have it positioned. Once you have it down towards your piece, then travel through the second tube. If you need to open up your wire guardian before you place it on here or after you have it on so that it lays over the length of your 311 11 seed beads nicely. And all you have to do is put your um, chain nose pliers in there and just open it up. So now we're coming out of the tube of the wire guardian. We're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead. This process is all in the bracelet tutorial that I posted previously, so if you need more detailed instruction as I'm going quicker on this one, then you can reference that video and that will show you these units much more detailed. Pick up an 11 0 seed bead, you're coming out of the wire guardian, and go into the 11 0 seed beads from where the tail is coming out. Just ignore your tail and pull the thread through. Draw the wire guardian and the 11 0 seed beads directly on top of that row of three 11 0s. And then we're going to sew through it one more time. So just arrange it to where you can come up through the 11 o and the wire guardian. Pull your thread through and then put your thumb and your finger together holding onto the wire guardian and go through the opposite tube in 11 o on the opposite side. And draw your thread through. If you squeeze your wire guardian between your thumb and your finger, you can guide your thread into the divot very nicely. Now we're coming out of this 11 o here. We're going to go into the first set of three 11 o's on the side that the tail's coming out of, just like this, and pull the thread through. Now this side is ready to be used for our chain. So as you saw, I just kind of arranged my wire guardian to where it looks really nice on top of there. You can either open it, squeeze it shut a little, whatever you need to do to adjust it. Now we need to work our way over to this side. And how we're going to do that, we're coming out of this first set, is we're going to pick up an 80 seed bead and make our first bezel. So pick up an 80. You're coming out of this set of 11 0 seed beads. We're going to skip the second set and we're going to go into the third set here. And we're going to pull this 11 or this 8 0 seed bead. If I said 11 0 earlier, this is an 8 0. We're going to pull it over the top of the three sets of 11 0s. Then we're going to pick up another 8 0 seed bead. We're coming out of this set of 11 0 seed beads. We're going to skip the middle, middle set and we're going to again go through the set that the wire guardian is attached to. 
and go through all three beads. As you do this, press down the middle set of 11 0 seed beads so that it doesn't pucker up because it will. You want the middle set to go down and away from you and not up. And now you can see I have a small bezel that I've created. Go up through the 8 0 seed bead on this side. And now we will place a crystal in the middle of this little bezel we've created. So we will need a couple 15-0 seed beads to do this. Pick up a 15-0, pick up your crystal. If you're using a fire polish bead, a crystal, a, I actually tried a four millimeter round crystal. It works really nice too. So whatever bead you're using, pick up a 15-0, that bead, and another 15-0. You're coming out of this 8-0 seed bead. You're going to go into the same side on the opposite 8-0 seed bead and hold on to it and pull your thread through. Push the crystal into the little bezel and just give a tiny tug. And then pick up a 15-0 seed bead and go into the crystal. So here you're coming out of the 8 seed bead. Go into the crystal right here. Hold on to the crystal and pull that 15-0 down. Pick up a 15-0 seed bead. You're now coming out of the crystal. You're going to go into the opposite side from which you started, so you already have a 15 0 here. You're going to go into this side here, the same side you came out of on the opposite side of the unit, and pull your 15 0 down. And that is your first unit. Now, let me back off just a little. It looks like it's a little blurry. And now we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead. We are going to travel up into these three 11 0s here. Each unit will have three sets of three 11 O's in the ladder stitch. However, you're going to share a set with the previous unit. So this will be your first set. So you only have to create two more sets. So you're going to pick up three 11 0 seed beads. Coming out of this end, we're going to go into the opposite end of the three 11 O's. Hold on to the piece and just pull the new 311 O's down against the previous set, like so. Travel through the new set, pull your thread through, and then pick up three 311 O seed beads. Just make sure that you're not separating your sets. Keep them nice and close together. And then pick up three 311 O seed beads, you're coming out of the this side of this set, we're going to go into the opposite side of it, pull your three 11 0 seed beads down, and then travel back up through. <clears throat> Give a small tug to tighten, and now we are going to add our crystal and create a bezel. So pick up an 8 0 seed bead. You're coming out of this third set here of 11 O's. We're going to skip the middle set and we're going to go into the last set of the previous unit right there and pull the 8 0 seed bead down on top. As you do this, it will want to pucker, so just push it so that it puckers away from you instead of up and it'll create a bezel that way. Then pick up another 8 0 seed bead. You're coming out of this set of 3 11 0s, the last set in your previous unit. You're going to skip the middle set, and then you're going to go into the third set of your new unit that you're creating. And pull the thread through. Now you're going to travel into the 8 0 seed bead here. So you're coming out of these 3 11 0s, go into this 8 0. And then you will pick up a 15 0 seed bead and your embellishment bead, whichever you're using. I'm using the cuboid crystal. And then a 15 0 seed bead. 15 0 crystal, 15 0. And we're coming out of this side of this 8 0 seed bead. We're going to go into the same side of the opposite 8 0 right here. And pull the thread through. 
your bezel will kind of come apart a little bit, but that's okay because as we do this, we'll tighten it back up. And then pick up a 15-0 seed bead, go into the crystal. So you're coming out of the 8-0 on this side, you're going to go into the crystal on this side and hold onto the unit and pull your thread through and bring that 15-0 down on top of the crystal. Give a little tug so everything's tight and then pick up another 15-0 seed bead here and go into the same side of the opposite ADO. So we came out of this side, we're going to go into this side on this ADO. And pull your thread through, bring that 15-0 down. Sometimes you have to arrange these 15-0s so they're really pretty, but they should fall into place right on top of that crystal. If not, push them down, arrange them. They're not going to lay perfect, but you can get them looking pretty nice. Now you're coming out of this 8 -0. You have to go into the set in between the two units. So it would be the last set in the first unit and the first set in the second unit. So that unit right there. Go through all three of them. Pull the thread through. Go into the 8 -0 seed bead on top here. Right here. and then back into the last set of 311 O's, which will now be the first set of your next unit. So you will create two more rows. So pick up 311 O seed beads, and you're coming out of this side, go into this side. Now this is the exact same stitch that we did in the bracelet. So if you need more units done for you or you need more detailed instruction than what I'm doing here, go ahead and look at the bracelet tutorial. I am not going to do more than just a couple units here because a lot of you have already made the bracelet and you know how to make these units. So let's do one more unit and then we will skip over to the second step in this particular project. So we've got three 11 O's. Let's go into the opposite side here of the 11 O's in the second unit, pull them down, come up into that unit we just created, or that column actually, pull your thread through, pick up an 8 -0 seed bead, skip the middle unit, go into the unit, the last unit of the previous unit, and Draw that down while pushing the middle section down so that it doesn't pucker up. Pick up an 8 -0 seed bead, skip the middle section again, go into the third like this and pull. Now go up into the 8 -0 seed bead right next to where you're coming out of the 11 O's. Pull the thread through, tighten it up, pick up a 15-0, a crystal, and a 15-0, like so. Back off just a little here, and then we're coming out of this 8-0, we're going to go into the same side we're coming out of on the opposite 8-0, and then just pull it through. After you get three or four units done, then they're not quite so hard to work with. It gets pretty easy. The first three are the most difficult, just to kind of keep everything together. Pick up a 15-0 seed bead. You're coming out of this 8-0. Go up into the crystal here. And then pick up a 15-0 and go through the 8-0 on this side. And then travel into the three 11 O's between the two units. There. You can see on the back, pull this through, travel the 8 -0 travel through the 8 -0, excuse me, and then into the 311-0 seed beads on the outside. Now you can see here my 15-0 was stuck up on the top, so you want to make sure that they're not stuck up next to the 8 -0s, that they're down on top of the crystal. So arrange them, pull your thread tight so that they stay in place, and then go through the next set of 11 O's. And that is the stitch that you will be doing it's exactly the same as the bracelet. So as I said, reference that if you need to. And we're going to continue making these. It's very repetitious. Continue making these until you have a length with 44 units in it.
So you have your wire guardian, you've made 44 units, and then you've just left a very long thread. So if you need to extend somewhere in here so that you have a nice thread left over, leave a very nice thread on the very last unit. So you've made 44, and then you set this aside and you make another one with 38 units, like so. So you start it exactly the same way. You will put your wire guardian on, make all of your units, and make 38 of them, and also leave a very long thread on the very last unit. Once you have your two lengths of units done, then you will take the one with the 44 units and set aside the one with 38 units. Put your needle onto the long thread that you left on your piece, and we will begin making a dangle at the end of this long unit here. So the way we are going to do that is we are going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead onto our needle, and then we are going to pick up 10 8 0 seed beads. So go ahead and pick up 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oops, 8, 9, 10. Drop this to, down to your piece, like so. And then you're going to pick up a crystal and a 15 0 seed bead, like this. And actually, let's use an 11 0 because we're going to travel through this little bead a couple of times. So pick up a crystal and an 11 0 seed bead, and then drop this down, and then go around the 11 0 seed bead and just into, well, go into the crystal and then go into all 10. 8 0 seed beads and exit the 10th one. Don't go through the 11 0 seed bead. So I'm going through all 10. There's an 11 0 right there I dropped down first. Don't go through it. And pull your thread up through so that basically what you have is a really long fringe right here. Now you're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead here. Pick up an 11 0 seed bead and go into. The last unit you're coming out of of your 11 0 seed beads here. So when we started, you wanted to make sure that your thread was coming out of this this column of 11 0s. It should have been if you finished your unit correctly, and then just pull through it and pull the 11 0 seed bead down. To where it's there's two 11 0s sitting next to each other parallel and then you have a long length of 8 O's in a crystal at the bottom. Now what I want you to do is just take this 11 O on the bottom and just pull on it a little bit. You want to have a little bit of slack in this. You don't want it to be really tight because we're going to sew back through it. So you want them to lay just loosely together like this. No slack but also not really tight and bunched just like this. Then we're going to go into the 11 0 seed bead on this side. So see, we're coming out of these 11 0s here. You're going to go into this 11 0 right here, and you're going to travel all the way down to the very end of the unit. All the way through the crystal, and then we're going to go through this 11 0. Then we're going to come up through the crystal and we're going to exit between the second and third 8 0 here, right between them. So you're going to skip one, exit the second one. Then we're going to make a little fringe coming off here. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead, or actually, let's use 15 0s. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead and a crystal and a 15 0, like so. And we're going to drop these down to where we're coming out of those two 8 0s. Then we're going to go around the 15 0 seed bead into the crystal and then into the 15 0 on top of the crystal and 
pull the thread through. Then we're going to go up into the third 8 seed bead and the fourth 8 seed bead. So right in between, we're coming out in between these two beads here, we're going to go up into that bead and then exit the one on top of it, like so. Pull your thread through. And if your fringe isn't really tight, you can pull on your 15-0 a little bit and then pull your thread and you will get that fringe to lay really nice coming out of those beads. Now we're going to do the same thing again. We're coming out of this bead here. We're going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead. We're going to pick up a crystal and a 15-0 and drop these down. <laughs> being stubborn. Drop it down to the unit here. Let me arrange my thread better. And this is what you should have. Now go around the 15-0, go into the crystal, go into the 15-0 on top of the crystal, and then go into two 8 seed beads. So you're coming out between these two, go up into this one and the one above it. And let me get positioned better here, guys. Sorry about that. Go up into these two beads here, just like that. And then pull the needle through. Pull the fringe up tight against the 8 seed beads. Bring your thread back over to this side and pick up a 15 seed bead, <clears throat> a crystal, and a 15 seed bead, and repeat the process. So we're going to go we're going to drop these down, go around the 15-0 into the crystal and into the 15-0 above the crystal and then into 280 seed beads like so. And then you're just going to pull the thread through. Now you are again going to pick up 15-0 seed bead a crystal and a 15 0. Drop them down. And then go around the 15 0 into the 15 0 above the crystal and into two 8 0 seed beads. And exit right here. And this is what you should have. Now you can leave it just curved like this if you'd like for your dangle. I think that's kind of pretty and I was going to originally do that, but then I decided I wanted to add more and actually have a straight um, kind of poofy dangle. You can put as many of these fringes on here as you'd like. I'm just going to show you a basic way to do it. You can modify it any way you want. Now I'm going to go up into this 11 out. So I'm coming out of my last 8 out on my fringe here. I'm going to go into this 15 or this 11 0 and then into the three 11 0s on the unit like so. And then into this 11 0 here. And then I'm going to go into all 10 8 O's again, all the way to the bottom. It's very hard to work your way down doing this, so you have to go all the way down and work your way up. So we're going to go all the way to the very end, and the beads are kind of funny now, so you just have to feel your way through them. Go all the way through the crystal, move your 11 O aside so you can get your needle through, pull the thread through, Straighten it up underneath here because it kind of pulls to the side. Straighten that up by pulling your thread and then go through this 11 of seed bead. And then go up through the crystal. Now we're going to go between the beads where we don't have a fringe. So the first time we went up two beads. This time we're going to go up one bead here and put a fringe between the two, first two beads. So we're going to go through here. So you can see I have a fringe here, here, here. I'm going to go 
everywhere there isn't a fringe and there's two eightos together. And I'm going to go between those two eightos and put a fringe. So that will be your guide. So I'm coming up through here and I'm going to pick up a 15 i I'm going to pick up a crystal and I'm going to pick up a 15 o and then I'm going to drop this down. I will go around the 15 o up into the 15 o above the crystal, and then I will go into two 8 seed beads, and that should place me right where there isn't an, a fringe already. So just like we were doing before, I'm going to go into two 8 just like this if you can see that, and pull through. Now I'm positioned in between where there's a fringe on the other side. So I'm going to pick up a 15L, a crystal, and a 15L, drop it down, go around the 15L, into the crystal, into the 15O above it, and then I'm going to go into 280 seed beads and exit. Just ignore the fringe and just go through 280s. And that should place you right where you need to be for your next fringe. And this is what it looks like so far. So just continue making your fringe until you come out of the very top one here. And then we will be back. Okay, so I went ahead and did my next fringe, and at the end here, after I come out of my two eightos, I just have one bead on top of it. But I'm still going to go ahead, because I went through my two eightos, I'm still going to go ahead and place a fringe through this one. And then when we come back through, we'll come up through this eight -oh, this 11 -oh, and sew back through our three 11 -ohs. So go ahead and do that, and we'll be back. Okay, so I've made my last fringe here. You can see I'm coming around my 15 0 I've come up through the last 8 0 and then the 11 0 on top of it towards this side at a diagonal here. And I'm just going to pull my fringe through. And then I'm going to sew through these three 11 0s right here. And I'm simply going to set this aside. And I'm going to grab my other one. And like I said, you can poof these up. You can put more. If you want to go make another pass through it, you can. However you want to do it. But I think that that's quite enough, actually. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to take my needle off of this one and set it aside. And then I'm going to grab my other one that I made of 38 units here. Put my needle on. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. So go ahead if you need to back up the video and make a fringe on this piece exactly the same way we made the fringe on this piece and then we will be back. Okay so now you can see I have both of mine done and I have put a needle onto my longer thread now. So you can take it off of the or onto my longer pieces thread you can take it off of your short piece and put it on there or you can just get another needle out and that's what I've done. I've just got another size 12 out and I put it onto the longer segment of our units here and I'm going to push aside my shorter segment and then I'm going to, I'm coming out of this row of 11 O's and I'm going to sew until I come out of my fifth 8 o seed bead on my longer segment. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up into this 8 o Now you may want to have a pair of long nose pliers to pull your needle through because some of these units are full of thread and they get a little difficult. So we're coming out of this 8 o We're going to go into the column of 11 o's between the two units here and sew up through it. Let me get you closer. And pull through. And then we're going to go into this 8 o on this unit, sew up through that 8 o and then sew through 
the column of 11 O's between the two units and pull your needle through. And it does get a little tough sometimes, so just gently pull it through with a pair of long no or chain nose pliers. <clears throat> Go through your 8 0 And then go through the column here. And we should now be going through the fourth 8 0 seed bead on the inside here. So go through that one. Go through your chain nose pliers. Or go through your chain nose pliers. Yeah, okay. Go through the column of 11 O's between the two. And then pull through with your chain nose pliers if you need to. Some of you might not need to. It just depends. And then, now on this one, it's going to be a little different because we want to come through this fifth 8-0 seed bead here. So we are going to go into this 8-0, then flip your piece over, and go into the column right beneath the 8-0s here. So it will be the middle column of 11 0 seed beads. I'll get you really close so you can see. So we've, we're just coming through this column of 11 O's. You can flip it back over. And now you can come right through that 8 0 on the fifth unit. So if you count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you should be coming through the fifth 8 0 seed bead now. And now what we need to do is join them together. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this unit here, my shorter segment, and I'm going to place the 8 O's between the 5th and 6th 8 0 on the long unit here. I'm going to place my first 8 0 on the short unit. And I'm just going to move my thread on this unit aside. So first let's do this. Let's bring our thread through the 8 0 on the first unit here and then we're going to go through the column of 11 O's right here and this is my shorter unit, my, my shorter piece and my thread is just now coming out the outside okay. here. Now that you have your thread coming towards the outside here on this unit and you're coming out of the fifth 8 0 here, you are going to line the first 8 0 of the shorter unit in between the fifth and sixth 8 0 of the longer unit, just like so. And then we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead here. We're going to go into the 8 0 seed bead, the very first one on the shorter unit. Make sure that your thread doesn't tangle in any of your fringe or that you go through any of the 15 O's on the two pieces, like so. Now, as you're coming out of this bead, you're going to go into the next bead. We're going to go diagonal into the 8 O's and zip it up just like peyote. You just have to be really careful that you don't run your needle through any of the embellishment 15 O's or the threads that lead into the 15 O's or you'll just have a jumbled up mess. So I'm going to pick this up a little bit. I'm coming out of this 8 O seed bead here now. So I've gone from this one to this one. Now I'm going to go into this one and just watch my needle. Make sure that I don't tangle anything else into that thread and now I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to go across into the very next one on the very next piece. Let's get you even closer and pull your needle through. As you do that, watch your thread. Make sure it just goes through that 8 0. And then go into the very next 8 0 on the very next unit across right here. And again, very gently, very slowly, pull your thread through, avoiding any of the 15 O's or thread bridges that lead to the 15 O's. Then go into the next 8 0.
So we have gone through, we're going to count it in diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is our seventh bead we're going through. Then we're going to go into our eighth bead on this side. And then we're going to go into the ninth bead on this side. And the tenth bead on this side. Then eleven here. Twelve here. And then this time we're going to come down. So we're going from this bead back into this bead down. So we're turning our needle around. Now we're going to go back into the beads we just went through. So we're going to go back into this one here. and pull it tight and then just travel back through all of the beads exactly the way we just did it. So you can do two at a time. I'm going to go into this one and this one at an angle here if I can. Be very careful not to pick up any of the thread bridges or any of the 15 O's. Pick up the next two Go through them and pull your thread through. And again, two more. And pull your thread through. Let me get back in camera here. So basically all we're doing is sewing back down through all the beads we just went through. I hope you were able to see what I was doing. I have to get back into this one. And then I'm going to go into this one here. And then I'm going to sew into the column of 11 O's between these two units here, like this. And then I will pull my needle through very gently. Try not to tangle anything. You've got fringe everywhere now, so it's really easy to do. And then we are just going to go into this 80 seed bead right here. And I'll show you what we have so far. So they should be joined together like this. The ends of your necklaces, or of your um, two strands, should be even on the end here. Okay, at this point, you can either, let me zoom in, tie off, you can sew through a couple of the beads, tie off on thread bridges, and be done, and connect your chain to the end so that you can have it come up around your neck. Or we can continue some embellishments and sculpt this a little bit. And I will show you how to do that. But as I said, if you would like to, at this point, you can just go ahead and be finished. But if you're not going to be finished, we are coming out of this bottom one on our shorter strand. We're coming out right here. 
of the between these two ados. So what we need to do is we need to go into we'll turn it around. We need to go into this middle. Let me get you close. So we're coming out right here. We need to go into this middle one right here. So the column right beneath the ADO seed bead, go into it. Go into the bottom column here. And pull your thread through. And then turn it over. I hope I was in camera. Let's see. So basically what I did was I went through this middle column and then the bottom column. I am now coming out of this bottom column and I am going to come up through this 80 seed bead right here. Okay, so now to start sculpting this, we are going we are coming out of this 80 seed bead right here on the shorter length of our crystal piece here. Now we're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead and we're going to slide through to the ne through the next 8 o seed bead placing the 11 o between the 8 o's. So pick up an 11 o and slide through. You're going to place five 11 o's like this. So just go into the next 8 o. This is number two. And of course, watch your fringe. Three. Four. Five, eleven O's. And then here, you're going to switch to 15 O's so that it brings your piece around like this. And we're going to place four or five 15 O's. Let's see. Pick up a 15 O. Let's get you a little closer. And start sliding between the 8 O's with 15 O's. One. Two. three, four, oops, I just flung that across the room, four, five. Now we are going to place four 11 O's. It's the changing of the sizes that's going to make the shape that we end up with here. So go into the next 8 O with an 11 O and we will place four of them. Now we want it to billow out, so we're going to start placing 8-0s between the 8-0s. So now we'll pick up an 8-0. And slide between the 8-0s with 8-0s and just continue all the way to the end with 8-0s. So 8-0 between the 8-0s and just continue going. until we reach the last 8 -0. And then we're just going to slide through the three 11 O's that the Wire Guardian is attached to. And again, it's getting a little tight, so just pull it through with your pliers and then set that aside. And then 
oops, excuse me, let's go this way. And what we need to do is we need to get this thread prepared so we can do the same sculpting effect on this side. So you can see how this has brought my necklace in and around. So it has a nice pretty shape to it. Now this side we need to establish a thread path coming this way. So what we are going to do, let me just park this thread over here somewhere and grab the needle for my longer one. Get you in here. And I'm coming out of this 8 seed bead right here after I finished um, attaching the, the two pieces together. So now I need to work my way down so that I'm coming out of this bottom 8 -o. So what I'm going to do, sorry, is go through these four or these three 11 O's between the two units here. Go through the 8 -o here. Go through the three eleven O's here. And again, a little thread tight. Make sure you don't get tangled in any of your eleven O's or anything like that. Then we're going to come up into the, or we're going to go into this eight O, come up into these in the middle here into this ado here down through these three on the very bottom right here and up through this ado now, I'm going to have to look at this and begin 11 O's, 15 O's, and 8 O's again on this side. So let me get this all straightened out here. So we are going to place 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we're going to place nine 11 O's, actually 10 11 O's in between the eight O's here. So we're going to start and we're going to pick up some 11 O seed beads and we are going to place 10 11 O seed beads between these eight O's here. Until we get to the point where we started our 15 O's on this side. So it appears to be 10. Let's go ahead and go through placing 10 11 no seed beads. After you've placed the 10, we will be back. Okay, so I have placed 10 11 no seed beads all the way up to this point. Now I'm going to place five 15 no seed beads. And something I wanted to show you really quick. On this side, if this thread gets loose, then you'll lose the form that we made with our sculpting. So just pull this thread every now and then just to make sure that you have a nice sculpting so that you can use it as a reference for this side. And then when we get done, we will knot that tightly so it holds the pretty shape. So let's go back to this side now and let's put in five 15 O seed beads. Grab some 15 O's and we'll just start sliding between the 8 O's again and go ahead and place your 5 15 in and then we'll be and back. And now I've placed my 5, I will now place 4 11 O's in and then after I have placed my 4 11 O's, I will finish with 8 O's. So go ahead and place 4 11 O seed beads between the 8 O's and then begin putting 8 O's between the 8 O seed beads until you come to the very end of your necklace. Okay, so now we have a nice sculpted shape with our 11 O's and 8 O's and 15 O's. If you'd like to, you could do the same thing on the inside, just where it needs to curve in. You put in a smaller bead where it needs to curve out. You put in a smaller or a bigger bead, but I find that this will work well enough to hold the shape. So, and it doesn't have to be quite that curved, so we can bring it out a little bit. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the tension of the thread how much sculpting you want on either side I want mine out like this so that's about as much tension as I want on this thread if you want it tighter then you pull your thread tighter I'm going to arrange it just like I want it and then I am going to if I need to I pull it really tight and then stretch it out however you want arrange that tension that's what's going to make your shape and then you're going to tie a knot onto the thread bridge here so we're coming out of these 3110 seed beads that the um, wire guarding is attached to we're going to pick up the thread bridge right between the 80 and the 11 O's here and we're going to tie a knot on that thread bridge right there so I brought my needle underneath it and unfortunately I just pulled my uh, thread out of my needle so let me fix that okay so again I'm going to go underneath this thread bridge and let me make sure I have the sculpting the way I want it yes and then I'm going to go under this thread bridge right here in really close like so and then we're going to pull the needle through so I'm trying not to say like so so much because someone wrote a nice little comment well crappy little comment saying how much she hated when I said that so I'm gonna try not to say that but <laughs> I'll probably say it a billion times anyway because I really don't care but anyway tie a knot right through there and then pull your thread and then go into the 80 seed bead and then go into the 11 O's here in the middle pull your thread through and then go down a couple more columns so I've got quite a bit of thread in these columns so I'm just going to go through the best I can and if I can't do that then I'll go back up through this 80 and go through a couple of these 80's however you can get through we're just tying off now so if you go through these middle columns you can get through a lot easier because they're not as full of thread as the other columns are so and get through here there we go and I'll just sew through a few more and tie off right there one more time so I'll grab this thread bridge here and tie another knot try not to bunch up your pretty thread path here go through this one then I'll go through this one and then just to ensure extra strength I'm going to go through this middle one again too because it looks like they were separating a little and then back up through this one and that's pretty knotted now so I can just cut off my thread but I'm going to leave it there for now look at my pretty shape make sure I like it back off and then just do the same thing on this side see if I pull on this how it can really tighten it down like that and I want it a little looser than that so I'll adjust my um, tension in there and when I get it just perfect I will go ahead and tie this side off the same way I tied this side off and then I'll cut my thread off burn it down and we'll come back and attach some chain. Okay, so I have finished my ends. I've cut off the thread and burned it down. And now, since I want this to lie pretty close to the neck, you want it to be more of a collar and this part just drop right at throat level for it to actually have the proper shape. You only need to cut about three inches of chain. So I've cut three inches 
two segments of three inches. I put an open jump jump ring on one segment and I put a lobster claw on the other segment. And then you can open one of the links of your chain just by twisting the link open like this and then slide it on to your wire guardian and close it. And do the same thing on the other side and then we'll be back and I'll show you the finished piece. And this, my friends, is what our pretty little finished collar looks like. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you give it a try. Bye-bye.